Video game passwords come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're too long, sometimes they use dots, and sometimes they string random words together to create awesome phrases. Passwords will help you jump to the right level, save your progress, and even undress a certain Nintendo heroine. But today we're talking about a very different type of password, one that shouldn't really exist. The code in question is for Devil's Crush on the TurboGrafx-16, a demonic video pinball game where you fought ghouls, ghosts, and evil monks with a shiny ball. Although critics were mixed when it first came out, I loved it as a kid and still think it's an underappreciated gem. But what set Devil's Crush apart from all those other pinball games is that it had a simple password system that was easily exploitable. One of the first people to notice this bug was David White, one of the assistant editors at Electronic Gaming Monthly in 1990. After punching his name into Devil's Crush, he was surprised to discover that it not only worked, but shot the player to the very end of the game. He printed the fluke in EGM's 1991 video game Buyer's Guide, which is where the story should have ended. But Ryan Sullivan of Seaside, California wasn't prepared to let the code go unnoticed, and he submitted the password to GamePro magazine in hopes of winning a free t-shirt. His plan worked, and GamePro published his code in their March 1991 issue. This was followed in April by Electronic Gaming Monthly calling out their competition, explaining how the Devil's Crush exploit worked and mocking GamePro for stealing their code. And they weren't the only ones to run this password. You'll find David White's name pop up to this day on GameFAQs and countless other sites that publish cheat codes. And longtime fans of EGM will already know that this wasn't the only time their codes were lifted by other magazines. Typically, this plagiarism went unnoticed, but sometimes it was blatant. For example, after EGM published an April Fool's joke that involved unlocking a hidden Street Fighter II character, several foreign publications ran with the code. I guess the whole April Fool's Day thing was completely lost in translation. In the end, this whole thing reminds me of a quote I'm now going to plagiarize to help me underscore my thoughts on copying other people's work. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and flattery will get you nowhere, then it stands to reason that imitation will get you nowhere. Hey, thanks for watching the 26th episode of the 32 Dangerous Cheat Codes. We're down to the final few days, which means that we're gonna have to figure out something else to talk about come December 26th. The good news is that we're always reviewing games, and we're gonna be debuting a new series where we look at Electronic Gaming Monthly's best and worst reviewed games going year by year. If any of this sounds interesting, then I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.